This is a CBS News special report. I'm Anthony Mason reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. Good day. There's been another shakeup at the White House. Steve Bannon, the president's chief strategist, is out. You may recall our chief White House correspondent, Major Garrett, reported Monday Bannon might be gone by the end of the week. Bannon, once the executive chair of the far right Breitbart News, joined the then struggling Trump campaign one year ago yesterday, and he followed Mr. Trump to the White House as a top advisor. He's been on thin ice, though, with the president for some time. Earlier this week, Mr. Trump defended Bannon, but added, we'll see what happens. Now we have seen he's out. Uh, Margaret Brennan uh, is with the president in New Jersey. Margaret? Anthony, uh, the White House has officially confirmed what we first reported on Monday, which was that Steve Bannon is now out of the White House. Our Major Garrett first reported that this was expected by Friday, and it appears now, based on the White House definitive statement, that new Chief of Staff John Kelly had a conversation with Steve Bannon, the president's political strategist, and according to the White House, they mutually agreed that today is Steve Bannon's last day as a White House employee. They thank him for his service as well. Uh, it is interesting the White House is putting this on the shoulders of Chief of Staff uh, General John Kelly here. Uh, what we know is that there has been, as you said, a lot of frustration about Steve Bannon and his role in the administration. He's a lightning rod, not only because of uh, his links and support and having been a platform for alt-right groups who have links to white supremacists during his time at Breitbart News, but for months now, there has been a lot of internal feuding uh, within the Trump administration, exactly the kind of thing that Chief of Staff John Kelly is trying to end as he tries to establish command and control over a, a White House that seems at times to be at war with itself. Steve Bannon has been at odds as well with the national security advisor to the president, H.R. McMaster. Uh, but really, the straw that broke the camel's back, uh, to, to use that phrase, was this week when Steve Bannon provided a reason to Chief of Staff John Kelly to fire him or to ask him to leave, which was he gave a series of interviews that did not appear to be authorized to be on the record, according to the White House, in which he not only discussed the role of white supremacists and alt-right fringe groups, clowns as he calls, called them, but are politically useful, but here's where it mattered to uh, the White House from a national security point of view, he discussed uh, the president's thinking on the issue of North Korea and China. He did that, he attached his name to it, and he undercut the positions of many of the military leaders in the White House and the president's own public posturing regarding the potential use of force against North Korea uh, to offset the nuclear threat. And so uh, it was that this week that has provided uh, reason for firing that had, as we've reported consistently, uh, been a lot of suspicion and a lot of frustration with Steve Bannon and a role of a disruptor within the Trump administration. Margaret, how much do we know uh, about how this actually went down? Because Mr. Bannon has apparently been telling some reporters uh, today that he submitted his resignation two weeks ago. I've seen those reports as well, and the White House is not confirming them. Uh, those reports say this was a two-week-long resignation process. Uh, that's interesting. Chief of Staff John Kelly came in a week before that. What we know is that very publicly, Steve Bannon was pointed out by the short-lived communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, as someone that he wanted to fire. In fact, Scaramucci, it was, uh, we've reported, was brought in, in fact, to help, help the president accomplish that, to cut down on the leakers, as Scaramucci called them. And he pointed directly at Steve Bannon as someone who has been leaking damaging information about the president. Steve Bannon has not publicly or on the record refuted that. Uh, but we do know uh, that around the time that this reported resignation letter was handed in, uh, it had in, in many ways um, uh, been a very difficult position for Steve Bannon to consistently have uh, uh, clout within the administration because of this internal fighting. So we can't confirm that resignation letter just yet, but certainly Steve Bannon, uh, if he wanted to excuse himself uh, and exit through the door rather than be fired, he would have had the chance to do that. Uh, I am told through my reporting that it wasn't quite so friendly, but we can't confirm that resignation letter yet. All right, Margaret, thanks. The last time President Trump spoke publicly about Bannon was at that now legendary Trump Tower news conference Tuesday. Here's what the president said. I like Mr. Bannon. He's a friend of mine. But Mr. Bannon came on very late. You know that. I went through 17 senators, governors, and I won all the primaries. 
Mr. Bannon came on very much later than that. Uh, and I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist. I can tell you that. He's a good person. He actually gets a very unfair press in that regard. But we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. But he's a good person, and I think the press treats him, frankly, very unfairly. This, of course, is the latest in a parade of White House resignations. Uh, Chip Reed is in the briefing room at the White House. Chip, um, <clears throat> here we go again. We sure do. But let me say one thing first. Those few words that the president said uh, in that uh, uh, press conference just now, but we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. To many people, that was the death knell for Steve Bannon. When the president is asked, you still have confidence in somebody, and he doesn't say yes and his job is secure, that usually means the person is out, especially after we've seen so many people be out at this White House. Uh, we have a list here of seven. Add to that Steve Bannon, and those are all very senior officials in the uh, Trump administration. Of course, John Kelly, the very disciplined four-star general, was brought on to be chief of staff to replace Reince Priebus, who had lost all control of this White House. It was simply chaotic with all the different power stu uh, centers feuding. Uh, and then when Anthony Scaramucci came on as uh, communications director and made very clear that he was going to be another big power center in that feuding, Kelly got rid of him very quickly. Uh, it's not entirely clear exactly how much of this decision was John Kelly and how much of it was the president, but I think we can rest assured that John Kelly had a big say in this because this is what he was brought in to do, to bring some discipline to a White House where the staff was feuding and was just simply out of control. Anthony? Chip, how much, if at all, does this shift the balance of power in the White House? Well, I think it gives some power to, it gives the power to John Kelly. Uh, you still have another power center with Ivanka Trump and her husband, Jared Kushner. Uh, but one of the things that Bannon did that probably set him up a long time ago for an eventual fall was he also picked fights with Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner. And sometimes those fights were quite personal. Uh, and those are two people, the president's daughter and son-in-law, who you really shouldn't pick fights with. Anthony. Chip Reed, thank you very much. To repeat, President Trump's chief strategist Steve Bannon is out in the latest shakeup at the White House.